Hello and welcome to the week one video review for Understanding Language. I'm Jo Dixon and you may have seen my profile uh, and some of my comments in the MOOC. Uh, for this video review I've tried to pick out some of the most interesting conversations that I've seen over the week. Um, I will inevitably miss some, um, so apologies in advance if, uh, if you don't get a mention, but with over 2,000 comments so far, uh, and it's only just the, way, the end of week one, um, it's quite a lot for us mentors to keep up with. This is the sixth time that we've run this MOOC, and we have over 1,500 learners actively learning with us so far this week, that is, completing some of the steps. And over 500 of you have commented at least once, and in many cases more than once. Um, so thank you for your engagement. Keep it going, it's great. Most of the discussions at the moment are in week one, which is normal, but of course you can work at your own pace, uh, and some of you will probably start to get ahead of us over the weeks. So before you go on too far, and before anyone finishes, I'd just like to point out that you do need to upgrade if you want to get a certificate of participation. Um, and upgrading also gives you unlimited access to the course materials after the course ends. Um, there's a big pink banner at the bottom um, of each of the each week's to-do list uh, reminding you about upgrading and you can click on that if you want more information. In terms of what we've been talking about in week one, there have been some great comments about what meaning is and examples of implied meaning. I liked Laura's example about cake not just because it's about cake, um, and it received a lot of replies um, suggesting different ways that you could understand her example, um, depending on the context, pe depending perhaps on the, the speaker's intonation and, and other aspects. You'll find a link to this, and in fact you'll find links to all of the conversations that I mention in this video on the page in step 1.16. That's not on the YouTube page, but on the step within the MOOC. Uh, so check that out and um, see what you think and see if you want to, to add anything. The bottleneck hypothesis has received a lot of attention too. Um, Liz put forward a really original and interesting explanation of how she envisages that the, the beads get through the bottleneck as language learning advances. Um, so again, there's a link to that conversation on step 1.16. Check it out, see what you think of it. Do you agree with her? Do you see it in a different way? In another thread, Adam focuses on the importance of the learner's first language in learning a second language. And um, Agueda is waiting for an answer to her question in that thread about how um, English speakers learn to understand the concept of gr grammatical gender in languages uh, like Spanish or German, um, which have that concept where, when English doesn't have it at all. Um, can anyone shed any light on that? Check out the discussion and, and tell us your experiences or your, your thoughts about that. And um, Berenice has highlighted how different it can be actually trying to use language, a new language in real life compared to using it in the classroom. Um, Tayana has contributed to that thread with the suggestion that TV can help um, give you exposure to different accents and different ways of, of, of using the language. What do you think? Is TV a, a reasonable substitute or what else do you do if you don't have the opportunity to visit or live in a, lang uh, a country where the language that you're learning is spoken? On the topic of other factors that affect language learning, Dennis has initiated a discussion that's caught the attention of Josh, our other mentor, and other course participants. Um, about learning styles um, and I think this conversation is a really good example of how to get the most out of a course like this. We can put up a video or an article to introduce an idea but the really rich learning goes on in the discussion thread where somebody challenges that idea, somebody else posts um, a link to a source that either lends further support to the idea or refutes the idea and that's where you can really really develop your ideas so check that one out that thread touches on learning styles multiple intelligences and multiple modes of representation so that's an interesting one to have a look at so we're coming to the end of week one you can of course continue discussing topics from week one if you wish and you'll find um, all the links to the conversations that i've mentioned in the video 
on the page in step 1.16. Don't forget to like comments that you find interesting. Um, you can also reply to comments uh, rather than starting a new thread. If you reply to someone, they get notified that you've uh, commented on their comment uh, and they may engage in further discussion with you. So that's a good way of getting a bit more interaction going. Um, on each step, just at the top of the, the, where the comment starts, not at, not, not at the very top of the page, but at the top of where the comments start, you can sort comments by most liked to see which comments are most popular. Uh, again, a good way of seeing what everybody else thinks um, about a topic. Next week is more focused on approaches to classroom language teaching. Uh, so that should be an interesting week and I look forward to lots more interactions with you all uh, in week two. Um, and I encourage those of you who are just lurking at the moment to get involved and join the discussions. Bye for now.